people grasp things. When it's repeated often enough, often enough you begin to believe it. And so I want to, you know, thank First Lady for sharing that. And let me just segue straight into what I wanted to, well, the question that was asked, because basically she just explained it. The question that was asked last week that I said that I would deal, it, deal with, when it is says that we can decree a thing and it will be established. And we have taken that to mean that we can speak things into being. And that is not so. As a matter of fact, where that was taken from is in the book of Job. And it was after Job had lost everything. And one of his friends was speaking to him and was telling him, you know, if you have, would have done this, God would not have done that. And he was giving Job some advice as to how to deal with his situation. And let me just read quickly because I don't want to stay too long. And Pastor Nicole has already explained it. Job chapter 22. And I just want to read some versions so that you will get it clear. The NIV says, and we don't really use the NIV, but I'm using it tonight just so that you will understand. It says, you will pray to him. He will hear you and you will fulfill your vows. And verse 28, you will decide what you decide on will be done. And light will shine in your ways. That's the same thing shall be clear thing. The NLT says you will pray to him and he will hear you and you will fulfill your vows to him. Verse 28. You will succeed in whatever you choose to do. That's what it means. You will decree a thing and it will be established. It simply means that if you follow the ways of God, if you walk in his ways, you will be successful in whatever you choose to do. That is what Job's friend was telling him. It is not for us to stand up and say, well, I will decree something and it will come to pass. No, that's not what the scripture says. Another verse that says, whatever you wish for will happen. And let me just read one other verse because I don't want to stay on it because I think I'm first lady did a fantastic job of explaining it. Lamentations chapter 3 verses 37 and 38 says this. Listen carefully. Sorry, verse, yes, verse 37 and 38. Who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that woe and well-being proceed? I'll read it again. Who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that woe and well-being proceed? In other words, God is the one that has to decree these things, not us. Now, let me, let me say this. Because we were made in the image and likeness of God, because we are like God, we are creative beings. We are able to be creative, not create things, but be creative. And when I say that, I mean we are skilled. You look at an empty plot of land and it's right there, and to me it's just an empty plot of land, and somebody could go and, and put a house on it a fantastic structure. So there was nothing there, and it, but we cannot speak it into being. We have to use our hands. We have to use our skills. So everything that we create, and I'm using the word loosely, everything that we create is not from speaking it, but from doing it, from the skill and the ability that God has given to us. That's how things come into being. That's how inventions come into being. By using things, material things, physical things, that's what we can do because God has given us the ability to do that. But we cannot speak things into being. And I want to leave it there because, as I said, First Lady has done a fantastic job of explaining it. But I want us to, we have to change our mindset. We have to, to unlearn a lot of things that we have learned and, you know, we have to test the spirit, brethren, family, everything that you hear, whether it's from this ministry, the ministry you go to uh, on television, TBN, wherever, YouTube, you test it yourself. Go before God. God, are you really saying this? Seek it out yourself. That's why we are teaching you. We're giving you the principles so that you can seek out truth yourself. And don't just accept what is being said to you. Amen.
Amen and amen. All right. I just want to, uh, you know, um, make one announcement before we get back into the scriptures. Some of the things, we, we have planned some things for this year that God has laid on our hearts. And one of the things I want to mention now, and it will, of course, this information will come to you in the chat, but there's one thing that I want to mention. I want, I want to look at my, my, um, my calendar on Saturday the 8th of April. Write that date down, please. Saturday the 8th of April, we will be having baptism. Okay, we will be baptizing some folks. So we want to give you the heads up from now. We will be having baptism. It's glorious Saturday. It's the Saturday of the Easter weekend. Something else will be happening at that time too. We'll talk more about it. But I wanted to give you the heads up that we will be having baptism. So all those who need to be baptized, start um, getting ready, organizing yourself. Of course, we will be talking about baptism, sharing them, concerning it so that you will understand and know what baptism is all about. But we will be having a baptism on Saturday, the 8th of April. Okay? So please take that down. Great. And of course, there are other announcements that we will give in the chat and even during a kingdom study. But we want to get back to, we haven't done this since last year. We were looking at a particular portion of scripture last year, and uh, we have to get back to it. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. And I want you to really take your time to understand this because we are living in the last days. We are living in the end times. Today, I saw someone sent me a video of a news item where they were saying that at 50% of the Christians, I think, living in the USA, believe that we are living in the last days. So not everybody believes we live in the last days. But we do believe that. And Paul, in writing to Timothy, even way back then, Paul was preparing Timothy and us by extension for the times that we're living in now. And Paul, in writing to Timothy, he said, I want you to know this also, Timothy. He said, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Dangerous times shall come. For men, and he went on to explain the danger. This danger is not the same danger that Jesus was talking about when he talked about wars and rumors of wars and earthquake. That is one side of it. But Paul was given another, the internal side of that danger. He said, men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents unthankful, unholy. We talked about all of that already. We went through all that. And we, for those of you who, if you missed it, then you know, check YouTube without natural affection. And that's why I think that's the last thing we were doing. Without natural affection, in the last days, people will not have affection. The love of many will grow cold. And we are seeing that now. The kind of murders that we are having, people dying in cold blood, children are dying. Just a, a couple of days ago, was it yesterday, a six-year-old, they're dying, they're being murdered, and people are doing it without, they don't have natural affection. The natural affection is the love and the, and the, and the warmth and the goodness and the, all these things that are, God has built into us. But in the last days, these things will grow cold. Crime would increase. We're seeing that. Murder, kidnapping, human trafficking, all these things are happening because we are living in the last days. Human lives will no longer have any value. There will be no compassion, no empathy, no sympathy. Nothing like that. Because we are living in the last days and folk have got to no, you got to understand. And in the last days, it will be every man for himself without natural affection. 
even we are seeing the rise of the LGBTQI plus movement because what is natural has become unnatural. So no, we will ha- no longer have natural affection. And so people are, are, are saying that, listen, I look like a man, but I am really a woman. Or I look like a woman I'm, I'm, and I'm really a man. And there's a saying that if it looks like a duck and walks like a duck and talks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then it's a duck. No, I don't care how you look. You could, you could listen, you could change your, your physical appearance. But as we just heard, your DNA, you cannot change. So don't start walking like a duck and quacking like a duck and calling yourself a duck. No, 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 no. It doesn't work. So, so without natural affection, sorry. And it goes on to say, Paul goes on to say, truce breakers, promises will no longer hold any value. Covenants will no longer hold any value. And one of the main covenants is marriage. Marriage will become a sham. People getting married today and divorced tomorrow. Some people decide, well, we're just going to shack up so that we, and when I feel to walk away, I can walk away. I won't have anything, you know, binding me to this person. Truth breakers, politics will get worse because when you vote for someone and you put them in power, you're actually making a covenant with them to represent you for five years. But people will be doing their own thing. And that covenant will be broken in the last days. Somebody's mic is open. Even the industrial relations climate between employer and employee, that covenant, we are seeing it now. We've seen all kinds of things happening. Look at this party in Tobago. They came together to win an election. And what happened soon after? They have broken up because the covenant they had with each other has dissipated. All that is happening because it is in the last days. Paul goes on to say false accusers. People will be accusing others of all sorts of things. Let's let's look. I I don't know, Joshua, I I gave you some some um, scripture verses to put in the chat. I don't know if if you did, but let's look at Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1. Proverbs 22, verse 1. And I think we did this already, but I just wanted to do this one, this particular one. Anyone has that one? Proverbs 22, verse 1. Dr. Richards, I'll read it because that is not one of the... um... Okay, all right, just read that one for me. Just read that one. Proverbs 22? Yes, first one. Okay. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. A good name. A good name is important. But in the last days, people are going to sully your name. In the last days, people are going to say all kind of things about you. False accusers. People are going to lie on you. They will have no regard for who you are. And they will say all sorts of things. They will even go to court and lie on you. They will slander your name. All of these things will happen in the last days. And we know that the sixth thing that God hates and the seventh thing that is an abomination to him, Two of those things talks about lying, a lying tongue and a false witness that speaks lies. All this is going to happen in the last days. Do you understand and do you realize that we are indeed living in the last days? Everything is playing out. Everything is playing out. So the next verse, and this is where we're going to start tonight and see how far we could go. Incontinent. Incontinent, verse 3. What is the meaning of incontinent? Well, the meaning of incontinent is someone who who is uncontrolled. He he lacks self-restraint. We call that person ignorant in Trinidad. Now, ignorant really means lack of knowledge, eh? But, but, but in Trinidad, ignorant means you're always vexed. 
You're all, have you, you'd like to be around somebody who always vex. And, and they, 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 they're not tame at all. You can't tame them. They have no self-control. And self-control is the ability to control yourself or to exercise resi re, uh, you know, restraint over your own impulses, your thoughts, your action, your emotion, your desires. In the last days, people will not be able to do that. That's why we have so much murder. And that's why we have, you know, so much domestic violence because there are people who do not have self-control. And it's important to have self-control because if you are to resist temptation, you must have self-control. If you don't have self-control, you will not be able to resist temptation. If you don't have self-control, you will get sick because you will be evil. You will be, you'll be greedy. You want to eat anything and everything. You want to be involved in everything. Self-control is important. You have to be able to control your desires. Otherwise, the devil will mash you up. If you are not able to control yourself, the devil will control you. So we have to exercise self-control. We cannot be incontinent. Look at Moses. Why do you think Moses didn't go to the promised land? Because he got angry and struck the rock. He, couldn't, he didn't control himself. What about David? <laughs> David walked up on the roof of the king's house, looked down, saw a woman bathing, and the lust rose up in him. And he lost control of his senses of who he was, the king, the man of God, because he lacked self-control. And because he lacked self-control, you know the story? He ended up committing adultery, conspiracy, murder, because he lacked self-control. These are the kind of people that's going to be around in the last days. And we have to, we must not be a part of that. We must not be incontinent. Samson lacked self-control, being and stronger as he was. They found out his secret, the secret to his strength. Why? Because he lacked self-control. He was, he, he was swayed by a woman. There are people, of course, you know, it's not all bad because there are people who exercise self-control. Remember Joseph? Joseph could have had Potiphar's wife, people. And nobody would have known and she would have kept it a secret. But because he knew he was who he was, because he knew who his God was, the people that know their God shall be what? Strong. They will not be weak. They will not be, they will not give in to temptation. The people that know their God, if you want. To be strong, because the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If you want to be strong, and it's a command. It didn't say, ask the Lord for strength. It says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If you want Sister, to be strong. Yes. Sister Janet Thomas, hand is up. Sister Janet. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Mistake. Okay. So if you want to be strong, get to know your God. And that's the same thing my first lady was telling you. We are weak or present and answered. We give into temptation only because we don't know God. And how do we know God? Through his word. We don't know the word of God. We might be able to quote it, but what does it mean? We don't know. And we have to understand context. Sometimes we take things out of context. And that is why a lot of time we do the wrong thing. We quote the wrong thing. We go and we preach the wrong thing because we take things out of context. You've got to know your God. And so in the last days, if you don't know your God, you will lack self control. Jesus had self-control when the devil came to him and said, hey, listen, you're the son of God. Turn these stones into bread. But Jesus, even though he was hungry, and I can imagine his stomach must have was, probably was talking to him, having conversation with him. But he had self-control. Joseph, Jesus, hey, two J's, 
I wonder if my three J's have self-control. Joshua, Jonathan, Judah, be like Joseph, be like Jesus. You got to exercise self-control. And self-control is should be part of who we are. Let's look at Galatians 5, 22 and 23. I'm sure I gave that one. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. If nobody has it, first lady, could you read it for me, please? After I have that scripture verse. Go ahead. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Mm. Against such, there is no law. What is the last one? Self-control. Self-control. And what does it mean, the fruit of the Spirit? It means if we have the Spirit of God in us, then this is what is manifested. The fruit is the evidence of what, you know, when you look at a tree and you might not recognize the tree, but if you look at it and say, hey, that's a mango tree. Why? Because you see a mango on it. You see the fruit. The fruit tells you what type of tree it is. So if we have the Spirit of God in us, all these things must be manifest, one of which is self-control. And if you have no self-control, how could a Christian be cussing and carrying on and carrying on? How could a Christian could always angry? How could a child of God could be, how can a child of God be like that all the time? You have to be able to practice self-control. It is a fruit, part of the fruit of the spirit. Self-control. Proverbs 29, 11. Proverbs 29, 11. You know, for me, I have that doctor said, it said a fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man pulls them, pulls them back. Thank you. A fool vents all his feelings. You know, that some people, they're just angry and they just want to tell you off and they want to, Bible calls them a fool. But a wise man holds them back. Proverbs 25, 28. Proverbs 25, 28. And Proverbs 15, 18. And Proverbs 17, 28. Those three. Proverbs 25, 28, 15, 18, and 17, 28. All right, Dr. Richards, um, I'll be reading Proverbs 25, 28. Mm -hmm. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without war. Who, thank you. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without war. What does that mean? Well, in those days when this was written, the strength of a city was in its walls. You protected your city by, the, by the, the walls that you put up around the city. Like the walls of Jericho, it was thick. They say five chariots could run on that those, the walls side by side. That's why it was so strong. That's why it had to be broken down, not physically, but spiritually. Whoever has no rule over his spirit, it means that anybody, anything can have control of you. The devil can come in and take you know, take a, take root and could, could cause you to do all sorts of things. If you have no rule over your spirit, it's like you trip easily. It's like anybody could get your fix because you have no rule over your own spirit. Proverbs 15, 18, what does that say? Proverbs 15, 18, and go ahead. Good night. Good night, Good night everybody. Proverbs 15, 18. A wrathful man stir up, uh, sorry, <laughs> a wrathful man stir up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. All right. Thank a you. wrathful man, thank you. An angry man, a wrathful man, a vengeful man, he stirs up strife. But if you are slow to anger, you avoid it. And Proverbs 17, 28. Good Proverbs night, 17, 28. Hi. Good night, everyone. Auntie Gail. Hi, Auntie Gail. Proverbs 17, 28. Even a fool when he is holding... Sorry. sorry. Even a fool when he holds his peace 
is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteem, esteemed a man of understanding. Amen. <laughs> you know what that means? It says, there's a saying that says, keep your mouth shut, something like this, and let people think you're a fool than to open it and prove that you are. Something like that it goes. So even a fool, you don't know he's a fool if you just keep his mouth shut. But when they start to talk and carry on, then, hey, that's an idiot. So what am I saying? Incontinent, someone who is out of control, someone who just, they're not able to control themselves. Someone who just talks without thinking. Someone who's always angry. They lack restraint. That's incontinent. That's the type of person <coughs> excuse me, that we will have in the last days. Are you seeing any of those people around? Can you identify? Can you, do, can you listen, in your workplace, in your home, in your community, are you not seeing people like that? Why are you saying people are getting in so much trouble? Why do you think crime is rampant? Because there are a lot of people who are angry. There are a lot of people who just they, they, they just quick to rush into all sorts of things without thinking they have no control over their own spirit. And there are people who are always, always vexed. You see them, they're vexed. Listen, you could be talking, everybody could be joking, talking and laughing, they're vexed. It's like one of the characters we have at work, Vex Man. Always vex. No matter what. They get up in the morning, first thing in the morning, you hear them quarreling. Last thing in the night, they quarrel. They're always angry. And these are the kind of people you don't want to be around. Because nobody likes somebody who is always angry who can't keep his mouth shut, who's always quarreling. I, I, I don't know how many of you like to be, a people, be around people like that, but I don't. I certainly don't. Incontinent. Incontinent. In the last days, people will be incontinent. They will be angry. I want to talk about anger a little bit. We're going to start it tonight and continue tomorrow, God's willing. What is, what is, what is anger? Well, let me tell you how the, the dictionary defines it. The dictionary says anger is a strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, or hostility. A strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, or hostility. And it's one of the basic emotions like happiness and sadness and things. It's a basic emotion. But the thing about anger is that it affects the way we feel, the way we think, the way we behave, and it even affects our mental and physical health. So we've got to be careful with this thing called anger. I want to pause here, and we only have a few more minutes tonight, but I want to ask the question. Is there anybody here who you're having a challenge with anger? People tell you, um, you, have a, you have a bad temper, you have a hot temper. Is there anybody who brave enough to say that tonight? To admit that tonight? That, you have a, that things trip you easy? That is get vexed? Anybody? Okay. Professor, Professor, yeah. good night. Good night. <laughs> Hi. I just get mad. I have a temper as well. Because I tell what's going on with everything. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. Dr. Richards, we have um brother Adrian. Um he he said me. Mm -hmm. Professor. Right. Yes, sister. Auntie Gail. Sister Auntie Gail. Mm -hmm. Auntie Gail says me, so they're texting in the chat. All right, so people say, okay, Cheryl sorry, because says, I'm not able yeah. to see. Right. Cheryl says I, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, Sister Debbie. Professor, does this count, right? Now, you hear, you hear when you ask the question, somebody tripping easily, yeah? But what about mm. the person tripping, he ain't say nothing, then stand up and steer them down. That is the same thing, instead of lashing out, instead of opening your mouth and saying, because you know well, what when I come out your mouth. That's is, the same thing, right? Is that is that tripping? Have you tripped? They get you angry, well, I, but... Well, but some people just trip on the action, but I just trip on the stand up and watch it, you know, in my mind, so, you know, like it's, I want to bury you now. That's tripping. Uh, <laughs> Now, now, one of the things, and we will get to that, is that anger is a natural um, emotion. Eh? Anger, in fact, anger, the Bible said be angry and sin not. So, getting angry. And there are people who get you angry. There are people Dr. who do Charles, things. Yes. I have, a, I have a temper as well, too. Yes, I know that. We, we, uh, and I'm glad you admitted it. You do have a temper. Right, there are some people get angry very easily, and one of the things we're going to do is how to deal with anger. We're going to we're going to come to that, but anger is something that a lot of people experience. Now, all of us, as a matter of fact, I should say, all of us got angry at some time. Some get angry very easily. Some it takes, you know, we have a high tolerance. Like myself, I don't get angry very easily. All right, but I real I understand that not everybody is like me. There are some people who get angry at the drop of a hat. And we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about how to deal with anger, how to, to deal with this feeling that you get when somebody does something. We're gonna deal with what are the things that cause us to get angry. And we, you know, not, not just angry, but some of us get in our rage. We are furious. We get in a fury. We're going to talk about that because we have to understand that anger, if we don't control it, if it gets out of hand, it leads into other things. And when it leads into other things, we get in trouble, other people get in trouble, and it's a whole mess. People are in jail because of anger. People are in the grave because of anger. People have lost their jobs because of anger. People have lost their, their homes, their marriage because of anger. And so we have to learn to control it. And anything, anything that you cannot control, you have to manage. So we learn how to control anger and how to manage it. We're going to be talking about that. And let me ask this question. We just have a couple more minutes. Is there anyone here who you, you, you perhaps you work with somebody, you're always around somebody who is always angry, it seems. It seems as though everything gets them vexed. Have you ever experienced that? Or, uh, or are you in a position where you experience that? Anybody? No? Yes, yeah, yes. I, I was with, with quite a few of those people, Pastor. Um, I tell you, they get me angry faster than the job of uh, I, I struggle with that. I struggle with that. Oh, so you're the one that get angry. They get you angry. They come out to me. And I just say that way. They come out to me in high, in, in storms, storms like these. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to be dealing with all of that. How to deal with the things that make you angry and the people that make you angry. We're going to be talking about all of that over the next few nights. All right, so we're going to end. Is there anyone else, Swiss Vidi? No? Um, Nigel, just, yeah, just about the, the tech, tech. They're texting in the chat, doctor, and saying yes. Okay, all right. Because I'm not seeing the chat, so um, thank you. All right, so we're going to be, talking a bit about anger, what it means, what causes it, how we can deal with it, how we can control it, and not only how we can control it, but how do we deal with people? How do we help people who have an anger problem? We're going to be talking about all of that over the next few nights. So we're going to end here this evening. Thank you so much for coming into our space for being a part of our family. Thank you so much. As Joshua usually says at the beginning, you could have been doing anything, but you choose to be here with the family. And so we welcome you. If you're here for the first time, welcome. We want to have you come back again. 
And those of you who are on YouTube, you know, please share the link. In fact, everybody share the YouTube link, share the, the Zoom link, and let's get everybody in so God can speak to all of us. So blessings to every single one of you. I love you and my family loves you and uh, have a wonderful night. I'm going to pass back over. I like First Lady always to close off.